Zimbabwean political analyst says the Southern African Development Community, SADC, is a toothless regional grouping that cares very little about its citizens. SADC leaders held their 44th Ordinary Summit in Zimbabwe's capital over the weekend. Rice groups had hoped that SADC would criticize Harare for its human rights record. Instead, the leaders made no mention of it in their final communicate as President Emerson Munagagua assumed the chairmanship. Tendai Ruby Bofana is a Zimbabwe political analyst. He tells me the leaders proved that SADC is nothing more than a leader's club. It's the same hot air talking by these Southern African leaders, but with nothing of substance truly coming out of these talks. We have now come to expect SADAC to be nothing more than a talk shop, where these leaders just have an opportunity to meet, dine, wine on this most expensive food and drink, and then just uh, talk about nothing, really making promises that they never have any intention of fulfilling. After that, they just go around, you know, touring, sightseeing. The next thing, bye-bye, bye-bye, they're on their planes and they're back home. But we, as the people of Zimbabwe, we then question ourselves, why did our government expend so much money building expensive high-end villas for these heads of state to stay in. And interestingly, James, they never got a chance to stay in them because they have not been finished. We have seen so many human rights activists and opposition supporters being arrested, jailed, denied their constitutional right to bail on flimsy, unverified, unsubstantiated claims of them planning to organize chaos during the SADC summit. But... Did the regional leaders raise any alarm? Did they even utter a single word of condemnation over... Zimbabwe's Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services says his country respects human rights in line with its constitution and international law. Zimbabwe hosted the 44th Ordinary Summit of the Southern African Development Community, SADC, over the weekend. Human rights groups criticized the government for arresting and jailing its critics and called on SADC to condemn the alleged violations. Information Minister Jan Van Muswari tells VOA that the summit was successful. The 44th SADC summit has been very successful. Given that uh, the re-engagement and engagement strategy, which has been championed by the chief diplomat, His Excellency President Dean Mangagwa, has redefined Zimbabwe as the paragon and clinical power in terms of international relations, in that um, the working has also underlined the importance of an inclusive approach under the leadership of the current chair, His Excellency President Dean Mangagwa, in that an inclusive approach to economic development in the region, the SADAC industrialization plan will be accelerated. And the whole of SADAC approach will be implemented in order to ensure that we have got peace and security, peace and tranquility, and that uh, the region uh, will be in terms of unity. So this has been a very, very successful time under the leadership currently of the new chair, President D.D. Mangago. Critics of your government said SADC failed to address the human rights issue which many organizations made before the meeting started, that SADC did not address the arrest of opposition or critics of the government. James, we respect human rights in terms of the Constitution and in terms of international law. And you need to have the historical background related to human rights, the history of human rights in Africa, and the history related to the right to self-determination, the history related to the emancipation and the liberation of African people, that we are our own liberator. We work together as African people in addition to progressive countries and individuals who contributed so much to the independence and to the freedom that we enjoy in the African continent. And I want you to know and to take note uh, fundamentally of the importance related to the institutionalization and to the capacitation and organization in terms of defending human rights that we have done as African people. And if we are to refer to Zimbabwe, 
that we have constitutional obligation to respect him, and that we do it for our own good. We are the only liberator. We came up with all these legal and organizational and institutional framework to ensure that we guarantee the freedom that we currently enjoy. So I want you to always remember that as a people, we value, we respect, we put in place legislation to support the freedom of our people and we respect human rights. Rwanda's President Paul Kagame says he might introduce a tax on church collections seeking to tame what has turned out to be extortion and exploitative tendencies by evangelical critics. In his first address after taking a new oath of office this week, the Rwandan head of state strongly criticized church leaders who masquerade under the cover of God to manipulate and squeeze money from people. He said, these unscrupulous people who use religion and churches to manipulate and free people of their money and their things will force us to introduce a tax. So churches pay tax on the money they get from people. Rwandan authorities said this week they had closed down about 8,000 churches for operating illegally and not fulfilling infrastructure requirements. Speaking after presiding over the swearing-in ceremony of the reappointed Prime Minister, Edward Ngilente, and new members of parliament, Mr. Kagame said he would go for more rogue preachers and their churches. Mr. Kagame said if truth is to be told, these mushrooming churches are just there to squeeze even the last penny from poor Rwandans as those who own them enrich themselves. Rwanda has recently seen an increasing number of Pentecostal churches, many of which build their churches on prosperity gospel doctrine, attracting more poor folk. We have seen cases of these cult leaders even leading people to their ch- death through manipulating and brainwashing them to starve to death and do all sorts of other things. It has happened in other countries. It is not just Rwanda that has struggled with the regulating preachers. Uganda announced last week it will publish a white paper on regulating worship after reports of extortion by critics. In Kenya, the courts are currently trying Paul Paul Mackenzie and his followers said to have brainwashed worshippers into deadly fasting.